World War III? The improved Bunker Buster missiles dug through the earth, exploding and destroying the nearly completed Iranian nuclear launch sites and energy plants one by one, fired by British, U.S. and Israeli jets soon after most of the SAMs, mobile and stationary, had been neutralized. Russia, from Georgia, immediately sent out interceptors, but our spent attack jets had already flown west and had thus evaded, eventually landing on carriers in the Persian Gulf. Yet the Russians' interceptors still attacked the fleet there, first engaging an insufficient number of interceptors of our own. However, Aegis' descendant computerized firing systems more than decimated the incomings, and so they retreated. Cruise missiles continued to pour into Persia, leveling much of the culture that had withstood a hundred invasions by melding with the conquerors. The Iranian clergy, who were also the rulers, ordered Israel wiped off of the map, as they had so often proclaimed and were going to do anyway, this in fact having been the very germ of their impending doom. They had two secret missile silos left, which actually had been completed and were fairly operational, more than enough to do the job. Both were beneath the world-sacred Persiolopolis historic site of irreplaceable monuments, installed there under the cover of archaeological digs. By now, all satellites, pro and con, had been blasted from orbits about the Earth. Replacements were already on the launch pads, but for now, the world was blind from space. The outgoing president of the U.S. sat back satisfied. Lesky rushed in, saying, There are two more. I've just heard from Graham's mind. We have nuclear activation amid the megaliths of all places. The ancient ruins began caving in as the giant doors opened, revealing another set of doors below, the missile silo surely within those. How, Lesky? The EMP has disrupted many of the electronics. Our minds know each other from our research together. The president signaled for phase two preparation, the nuclear retribution for an atomic attack on Israel, who too would begin their own nuclear launches upon detection of an attack. Just a preparedness move, Lesky, stated the president. Alert your people. I heard they can see in the dark. We though are dumb, deaf and blind for the moment. Our jets have left and those still in the area are yet engaged. The Russians must have seen this coming somehow. Plus, electromagnetic pulses have rendered auto sighting and navigation rather difficult for the time being. Lesky replied, No need, for they are the ones who just told me via mind. They will act on their own. I dare not distract them now. Graham stood atop a mountain peak deep within Iran and flicked on his lighter for five seconds for his long-range radio would not function. Graybeard, on another peak, looking there right at that moment, saw it from 50 miles away, for there were many more photons than required. A location signal followed. Rascal had already blown the sand off his jet, that being its camouflage, even though he was covering an unlikely area. But his instructions did say to expect the unexpected. Greybeard passed the word of the increased activity about Persiolopolis, his short-range radio working fine as expected, plus the sending via his mind as well. And Rascal's jet soon hovered, moving upwards, and flew out of the rising moon toward the historical site and center from which great learnings had spread across the world over a thousand years ago. Graham's long-range radio began to work for a minute. Did you get it, Greybeard? All the details? Yes, your signal confirming mind. The jet is now very much on its way. Bulldozers were already clearing the historic debris from the lower door. Underneath, technicians began the preparations to launch their medium-range nuke of destruction. The countdown had begun. A live SAM site quickly appeared in the jet's path, but Rascal's pilot knew what to do. The jet headed in low and swerved from its course, jamming all signals, then flew right over the SAM site and took it out. It was a gamble, but there wasn't time for anything else. The lower doors opened, revealing the sturdy missile silo underneath, as did those of another, just a mile away. With the jet now over the first sight, Rascal pressed a button and fired directly into it, using his one and only nuke-busting weapon, for it was so large that he could only carry one. It did the trick. Rascal was then horrified to hear about the second sight. Now what? asked Rascal's pilot. We're out of nuke-busters. Rascal replied, the jet itself is a weapon due to its speed, bulk, and fuel. Will do. The jet headed straight down and precisely into the second site, blowing itself and the launch site to smithereens and also to Kingdom Come. However, Rascal and his pilot did not die or get injured. 
as of course they never do in these stories. How could this be? They did not eject or anything like that. In the World War III story, Rascal and his pilot had about four minutes to save the world. Madonna even made a song about it. Rascal and his pilot survived for they were never in the jet in the first place, but had had flown it remotely, from a console, as a drone, such as those employed in Iraq and Afghanistan, although it was the improved model with a larger payload. Of course, it had good autopilot capabilities as well. Since many more answers that the above were quite applicable, I am sending all such responders a crummy toy car as a prize. Rascal lives and is now heading to Pakistan, the Taliban. Iran had been thwarted, but the roots of evil planted by humankind were deep and thriving in other forms and places in the world. T'was a critical moment, for World War III was ever on the verge, the axis of evil lingering on, although greatly crippled by the Allies and the covert Ninja World Empire. In Pakistan, another factory and its workers had been bombed by the Taliban, their commander even being brazenly present to witness the carnage of 200 dead or injured. RP Bibra, tailing them, had taken a video. There had been no way to stop them in time, so his heart yet fell into the bottomless pit. Although he'd witnessed much of the same over the years, he had never acclimated to the evil. This latest event was still as shocking as the first he'd ever known. Musharraf's forces pursued the Taliban, but they didn't catch them, for soon the Taliban countered, with more help, and overtook their pursuers, as the sad historic tales of human folly continued to be written in blood. A strange aside is that Musharraf's parents had often played bridge with Austin's parents in Illinois in the 1990s. True. Small world. And so the ninja had been allowed a deep penetration into Pakistan. Islamabad was aflame and had within days become a war zone, hordes of Taliban pouring in from the mountains of Afghanistan and eventually overwhelming the city. Greybeard and Rascal Puff appeared in Grandmaster Cynthia's Eastern Field Command Office, she recognizing Greybeard from his vacation photos on ToeQuest and Rascal from knowing his description of how he would now look. Greybeard, somewhat anxious, hung back, while Cynthia, sweet as ever, though yet renowned in her cover as the infamous Deathhead feared worldwide, addressed Rascal the Puff, the magic dragon master and butterfly of forever. My pleasure to meet you at last, Master Rascal, worker of miracles unimaginable. We must work together on this one, for I know the region well. At your service, Miss Commander Cynthia, level 7, and congratulations on your promotion to Grandmaster. I noted it on ToeQuest. Thanks, and no need for formality, Puff. Might I lighten the mood by asking how it is that your jets are often destroyed, for they cost us $40 million each? The jets often seem to elude me. Yes, one near DC and then another in Persia over in the Root of Evil thread. I am so sorry. We have a new one for you. Please take good care of it. I always try to and I will surely be much more responsible in the future. They couldn't help but all burst into laughter, for the act of saving the world was indeed priceless. The Taliban had overtaken the nuclear missile complex south of Islamabad just the night before, which was why Rascal and Greybeard had arrived. The site was a mile deep and was therefore bomb-proof, even by the bunker digger busters. It had even survived a direct nuclear missile hit by India a year ago. A truce between them was still in effect though, but the Taliban of course had control of the site now, as well as of the entire surrounding region. The Taliban commander was en route, and this certainly did not bode well so haste was made waste, with the final plans being concocted along the way. The site contains a long-range multiple warhead nuclear missile that can reach any point on the globe, Cynthia advised. Launch is imminent, so we must be off and away, answered Greybeard, and you don't look at all how I pictured you. Cynthia wished them well. Godspeed, all is ready. The next day, Rascal, from deep inside the nuclear site itself, diffused the intended launch and furthermore rendered the site inoperable, also planting a bomb in it, then left and was seen boarding the jet on the landing strip, his pilot already within. The jet soon took off, then crashed into the mountains a short distance away. Confirmation of the dead were then made by the Taliban, nothing unexpected being noted. Their funerals were scheduled for the morrow, just thereafter, the nuclear site imploded, and all hell broke loose. Later that night, back at Eastern Field Command, Rascal, Greybeard, and Cynthia sat down for a drink and toasted the mission. Cynthia drank only Canada dry ginger ale. Another mission, another jet destroyed, laughed Cynthia. Darn things just don't last, added Greybeard. Well, no one was even close so far. We do know, though, that by now Rascal is much afraid of flying. 
The answer, Cynthia's Eastern Field agents had intercepted the Taliban commander based on R.P. Bibra's intel, while he was on approach to the Islamabad nuclear site, substituting Rascal, who had already been pretty much made up to look like him even by the time he had arrived in Cynthia's office. It was not that difficult to impersonate the commander, for a beard covered most of the face, and a robe covered most of the body. SB underscore UK applied a few finishing details as the jet flew to the site, carrying Rascal, his pilot, Greybeard, SB underscore UK, the captured Taliban commander and another Taliban. While underway, Rascal had perfected the commander's voice imitation and learned his gestures there, and also from RP's video. The language was a problem, but Rascal had learned the word yes since any prompts to the commander at the site would most likely just be formalities of that nature. Rascal would mostly gesture anyway and try to look very serious. Additionally, Rascal knew that great leeway would be given to the commander as his personage was considered holy. A search would have been out of the question, plus the entire situation at the site was that of complete disarray, they having all just taken it over the day before. Well, of course, Rascal was let into the site and taken down to the control room, where he waved all away but for the main control person, whom he soon disabled. It was then a simple matter to inactivate the controls by some tampering and plant a bomb that he had carried in under his robe. Leaving the site, Rascal boarded the jet, one designed with Taliban markings, noting the two Taliban, one the commander, both knocked out and propped up in their seats. Rascal activated the takeoff autopilot and exited out the other side of the plane into a service vehicle manned by Greybeard. They drove off, picking up SB underscore UK, who was both a lookout and a backup, for he had mixed and poured universal acid into the ventilation system, a method that would disable the site as well, but just for a while and at a much slower rate. The jet took off on its own and crashed into a mountain, as designed, after which the bodies of the Taliban commander and pilot were recovered. A state funeral was planned, at which time Musharraf's forces would likely attack, for RP was still tailing and telling on them. The nuclear site then imploded, our good ninja friends making their way far away during the confusion. Well, no one got this exact right answer since no one cared about the contest, although Lesky reported a gland are uh, having something to do with it, but I'm still granting the prize of an annual and complete one-year trip around the sun to every ToeQuest member.